ten years to push them back, but we did. What was once a prosperous river trade, the Mississippi, is now the front line. The eastern states supply the river states, and what's left of the UA live out their meager days self-policing. What is the West hiding? Nobody really knows for sure. But we're alive, and this is the new frontier. This is it. It is coming. The great riot of Jefferson City, the slave revolts that will hopefully bring peace and order back to the city. I don't know, we'll find out. Let's see. What are you gonna do? We should secure the weapons first. All right. That's what we're doing. Heading down to the armory. So let's see where something like that might live, the town. But as we're sort of ma making our way through, I just ask you, I say, there's people fleeing. Do you want to send them after your friends? I nod, and the slave that I helped, the one who was attacked by the guard that The young I, woman with the long blonde yes, hair. Yes, yes. Okay. I approach her and I say, oh God, thank you so much. Oh, I don't know if I could spend another day inside of those pits. I can't believe, are they really going to eat us? Yes, do you have any family? Are you fleeing? No, I, I, uh, I wasn't going to flee. I want you to leave this city. You have why? I want, we have, we have some friends that are, they're badly wounded. Uh, uh, all right, um. They're, where are they? To the north. You kind of look at her as she's kind of just looking at herself and she's barely wearing anything. Rags, it seems to be bandages wrapped around her foot at this point. You can kind of see where a lot of her muscle mass has just been wore down to near nothing. She kind of looks at herself and looks at you and it, I, where are they? They're up north. There's a barn, it's run down. It's right past the 57 freeway. I don't know if this woman can help and I don't know if spreading information to them is useful. These people could be caught and questioned. I'll do what I can. Thank you for helping me. You kind of watch as she slowly stumbles off towards the river, at least at this is, stage. Is there some a message you have for your friends to know that you've sent this woman? Yes, there's two things we can show. Their names are Band-Aid and Ray. I want you to give this back to them. Do you have anything to eat? I dig through my bag and I give her. Depletion dice on the survival kit. Jenny, was that message not entrusted to you? I don't know if we're gonna make it. But you can give her some other token to show that it's from us. Here, there's still a blank page in my passport. No. Write her a note. She takes it and she takes the food and she just, just Keep this sinks important. into it. You can see that it's energized her a little bit. The food kind of shakes a little bit of the cloud out of her head for a second as she looks down to one of the guards and just starts unlacing its boots as he starts pulling it off and pulling his pants off and starts dressing in anything other than rags at this stage. I grab two other people that are milling around that even like look pensive. Yeah. They go with her. All right. Protect them. Tell them what happened here. All right. You said an abandoned farmhouse on the river. Yes. Band-Aid and Ray. Hey. Tell them Lucky Jenny sent you. We're gonna leave you with some salvage also to bring up there in case you need it. Okay. Supplies, tools, use what Anything you can. you can give. I mean, we have no idea what's out there. So, give her some random assorted salvage and a plastic dinosaur, and you send her along her way as she starts walking down towards the river. You can start to hear the occasional of like semi-automatic burst fire as it starts echoing in different parts of the street and you can start to smell smoke as clearly some of the slaves have just gone in and taken a piece of fire, a lighter, or whatever, and just throwing it into buildings just to start as much chaos as possible as they start burning down random buildings. Proceed to the armory. Yeah, presumed armory. Mm -hmm. So as you're getting up to the northern parts, as you kind of go again, go past this area, as you start seeing some of these residential buildings that have been repurposed, you're watching as people are just, it's 
It's almost like it's the fall all over again. Day zero reborn in a whole new way. Looting and gathering fires, screaming and gunshots. Chato, it's... How old were you when day zero came? 20. It's a little, a little heavy for you at this point. You're reminded at one point of when you were at the prime of your youth coming out and running around and hearing all of the death and the gunshots and the screaming and the sounds of the Chinu basically just coming across you everywhere. And you've come to peace with some of that now as part of a purge, a cleansing, a new rebirth of mankind as you are able now to live with these creatures as you've all found space together. But those first traumatizing years are coming back into you and it's starting to ignite a bit of a resurgence in your mind again. I actually stop for a moment and I look up at the sky and I say, Earth Mother, forgive us for our sins that brought this punishment upon us. Forgive us for the barbarism that caused you to turn your backs on us. But today, we do away with the old so that we can find our way back to you again. And I try and say it loud so people around can hear. Do you feel this spiritual comforting that comes back across you? You find some purpose, some guidance in this brutality and this madness once again that you're living inside of. As you can see, the fire is starting to burst around this hollow in particular is rallying people together. And you watch as actually a couple of men who are coming out armed as if they're coming out of what is presumed their homes and they're firing their pistols at him. And he just holds the, the shield up as you see it <laughs> off of him. Cover him. But yeah. And you uh, both roll depletion on both of them. It's fine. So I just want to keep track of you guys firing. But I want to fire. It's, it's a new session, by the way. Everyone can take their two competency points back. I think we're the well beyond the survival yeah. points yeah. at this stage. So what? I'll keep, I'll, uh, you actually didn't ward you from the last one as well, too. So I'm going to bring you back up to 43. Okay. And I'm going to check for my firing. <laughs> yep. Go ahead. Okay. One degree of success. I'm going to use first aid on my wound. Oh, right. Roll it. So you take some time to find a quiet corner, Kent, yes. and start pulling out some of your medical gear as you kind of start to treat the cut on your leg. And I roll a 20, which is four degrees of success. You can easily treat e any any dice. So did you get a four result? I did. I have so, a plus three dice and a plus one dice also. I can get rid of plus three too. Yeah, uh, by all means. So uh, you could take away the three, the four, or the one at this point. I'll take away the four. Right, okay. take away the four result. Great. How we are shooting... I had one degree of success, which I wanted to buy an extra damage die for. Okay. So. That was your shoot. Um, 14. 14. Yeah. One degree of failure. Okay. Missed in the chaos. Missed in the chaos. So you watch as Hollow basically takes this, you know, small arms fire <laughs> along the side of his riot shield, and you just unload with a <laughs> of the AK as a burst round just kind of riddles him as he falls down, uh, slumped against the side of his own door frame as he falls down. And you can see he kind of looks back to you, Jenny, and gives a nod as he Aah! and puts his ax forward as the slaves continue to just rush forward. Many of them now with anything they could find and one of them picking up the pistol from the other man as he gets a kick in the ribs before moving on down the streets. You all start to march along the side. You can start to hear the sounds of vehicles. Large trucks. As you look down one of the side streets and you can start to see several Hummers starting to roll down the two lane street in part of this residential area. You see one of them is a we should take is, cover. Is it the type of thing where they can like scatter between the houses or run into the houses and stuff? Yeah, they can. They've been done that. In fact, they've all gone right. off the road. I just yell, "Cover! Take cover!" Yeah, they all run off the road as they all start finding any kind of cover. Let's blend in with them. Or, yes. Well, yes. Yeah. As uh, as Walk basically slave. they all just get inside of a building somewhere, anywhere. As you hear, just <laughs> catches air as it comes up from the top of this hill. 
and just you can see its wheels just <laughs> this thing is just burning black behind it it's almost like it's burning pure oil yeah. you can just hear its pistons are just angry with every single acceleration that these guys are putting it down but there's a 50 cal right on top of it and he just clicks off the switches and he just starts shooting at the houses as he drives by all across each side of the house which is all of you dodge hit the deck hit the deck 50 cal two degrees of success over 100. that's a you got a three that's yeah, awesome perfect. yeah is the man armored in any way? As you saw him come up, he looks completely unarmored. In fact, he just, mm -hmm. <laughs> Mad Max style, he just has a pair of goggles on. His wind, his hair is just flopping everywhere behind him as he just looks to appear, he just has a vest on, but no, nothing on his arms or on his sleeves. You can be burned if we get close enough. Oh, as he just He's is. About to get burned. <laughs> he is just, uh, just scraping down the side of this hill, just unloading it into the houses in front of them. But no degrees of failure? Three degrees of failure. Three degrees well, of failure. I have five successes. Okay. Did you did you have any failures? I have three degrees of success. You have three degrees of success? Okay. So why don't you all narrate to me Jenny's miraculous save from getting mowed down by a 50 cal. Okay, um, we're in uh, an alleyway. Yeah. Uh, and as he comes, he's crossing uh, the, the point of the, the alleyway and he's turning the, the 50 cal and shredding the, the buildings. Yeah, uh, wood splinters are flying everywhere, concrete yeah. dust just Yeah, I basically do like a slide like into home base behind like an upturned metal dumpster. Yeah. And then uh, I, I grab her uh, arm and we're like this with the wrists. Yeah. And I grab the edge of the dumpster and I swing her in yeah. behind the dumpster. And her back just like slaps against the back of the yeah. wall as she just <laughs> gets the wind knocked out of you a little bit. But you just hear as a as a piece of brick just like shatters right next to you as it disintegrates into almost nothing. Does Paulo seem like he's okay? Paulo dodged with everybody else along the side. It's difficult to tell at this stage because just the, the, the machine gun is so loud, okay. you know. What do you want to do? Can I, I still have three degrees of success. I have two degrees of success. Is there any way we could run and try and get some crossfire, possibly? Well, you have a bunch of successes on your dodges. Right. I see no reason to not spend them as actions at this point. Yeah. Right. So use one for you just for hitting the dirt, though, just to right. keep that clear. Okay. All right. I use three of mine to counter hers. Yep. And then maybe one success for myself. Yep. It leaves me maybe one left. Yep. Okay. I yell out, everyone return fire. Can I just use this for aim? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when I, like, duck when he goes by and, like. All right. Use it. Use the base damage plus that, and you can roll two damage dice on him if you want. Right. You're looking right. for the gunner, right? Yes. And then Kent? Uh, I'm going to use my first. To, Rolling I used the dodge already to escape, to hit right. the deck. The second one, I'm going to. My dodge was lucky enough that the barricade passed by me on the street, and I was able to kind of get behind it a little bit. Yeah. So I have a clear view of the of him, the back of his head. Yeah. Number two. Number three is I'm going to throw that Molotov cocktail right in there. All right. All right. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, give me the Molotov. The last, the last one, one, guys. Last one. If not now, when? Oh, man. Yeah. Russia now. with love. Yep. Me, and, me and Asher made those. <laughs> the last oh, ones. Asher. <laughs> How did you do damage? Oh, it's the oh, third. Yeah, points. that is that was Seven. the third. Yeah, was okay. the third. So you kind of watch as you uh, are looking at the back of this guy's head as he's just laughing the entire time, just manically. He's never got to fire this thing before. It's just, and someone said, go take care of the slaves. And you could see in his mind that meant get in the Hummer and shoot the 50 cal. Like one and one equal two. So he's up there just... <laughs> And you watch as the bolt just <laughs> into his vest and he looks down and he rakes it over to you. <laughs> but as he's about to hit the trigger, that's when the Molotov just <laughs> right on top of them. And this manic laughter starts becoming screams as he basically lifts his hands up. And you can see as the Hummer attempting to shake his flaming body off is starting to make small sidewinding curves. And let's see how his drive check goes.
What'd you get? A 91. Hey, catastrophic man. failure. <laughs> we don't want too catastrophic. I want that, I want that we, Hummer. We want, I want that Hummer. Hummer. It's kind of on what fire now. What if it gets now, but... flung out? Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just more metal now that How it's on fire. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 5, 8, 11, <laughs> 15, guys get 15 mad. 19, 19 structural damage to this thing. This moment kind of happening with a flaming 50 cal guy as he just swipes right into the front of a building. And you kind of hear it groan as it starts to lean onto the Hummer a little bit as it kind of settles in on top of it. And you could just see the smell of cooking flesh as he is just sitting crispy right on the top of that gun as the flames start to slowly burn out. The gas on it in reverse as he watches black smoke is just popping out of the tailpipe just in like spouts and it groans as you can kind of hear the wheels. Now this was the only Hummer, right? The 50 yeah, so yeah. far? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> People have flooded by you. I mean, the fires are burning, the riot is ensuing, and you can definitely hear that the action, actions downtown, you know? I want us to get in that Hummer, and we're gonna go call out Kmon. That's right. what we're gonna do. Who wants to mount the 50 cal? <laughs> well, do you wanna drive? We, I'll should, sh we should be careful I'll drive. about how we approach, because like you said earlier, one rifle shot mm -hmm. could take out any of us. But yes. You did mention that if you challenged him, I actually believe we should let the people drive the Hummer because they can do whatever damage they can do and they can use the gun more strategically while we head straight to our target. I the, prefer this the, plan. The Hummer, right. the Hummer is general chaos. All right. Uh, we won't waste any more time. We'll leave right. the Hummer to the people. You yeah. take the white chariot. Yeah. Enough with the rail car. We'll get right. our rail car when this is all taken care of. Because I'm afraid they've got RPGs and we're like, huzzah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Came on. Yeah. Came on. Yeah. Came on. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> this is not my first rodeo, sir. <laughs> uh, yes, so send the people in, in the Hummer all right. uh, with the gun so, uh, ahead of us. You, uh, you appoint the first drivable people mm -hmm. who you can get onto and they mount in. You pull this thing out, you watch as you shove a couple of uh, two by fours, broken pieces of door or plank board from the buildings around you and you shove that in there as you watch as it finally just pulls out and the whole house just collapse right underneath it as finally as the fulcrum kind of just comes out, leaving this gaping hole in the building and you kind of uh, see the rubble strewn about you. Um, no one was hurt but uh, you watch this thing pull out as you begin your continued walk down into the city. Tell them to battle gloriously. Battle gloriously. You continue your trek one block, and you keep the fighting going as people continue to rush, and you can see as more buildings are starting to burn, and you start getting close to what seems to be less buildings and more sky-rise types, but this place is so much bigger than you ever imagined. It's like as you're walking down the river, it's one thing, but like going from street to street, from alleyway to alleyway, from car to car, it just seems like every foot is just some kind of magnificent strive for victory. As you continue to go forward, laborers and servicers from other parts of areas are kicking out their masters and putting people down. You see some of the slaves literally kicking their masters out, putting guns to their head and just executing them right on the floor as they just lay out. You can also see as some of the uh, uh, slaves are just gutted viciously and just a few of them have been strung up and hung literally in the rafters at various parts of lamp posts as you're walking down the street. It's Jesus against Christ. fire and chaos is just raining everywhere. Can I uh, regain a morale point seeing this awesomeness? <laughs> yeah, can I smoke a cigarette right now? No. 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 <laughs> yes, it's totally fucking metal. <laughs> but... For a coping mechanism, I was going to Yeah, for a coping mechanism. Understood. I, I try, Understood. I just try and find um, a high place just, yeah. where, just where my head's slightly above the crowd. I guess it usually is because I'm tall. Yeah. But just a little higher. And I just say... Um, Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, today we take back our lives, today we take back our town. I'm but one man, 
the people great spirit has sent to assist us, we are but individuals. But no matter what happens this day, never again lay down for Kama. Never again. Never again. Never again, Pokemon! Never again! As they all just shout and continue to move forward, Jefferson City, this town that you once remembered as part of your community, it was large when you were there. And seeing how few people were kind of living in the power structure that's in place, you were surprised at just how many people were oppressed in this city and how that few amount of people were able to truly strike terror in this majority group. So once this dam burst, it was just like a wave, as if the Mississippi flooded over Jefferson City itself as people just come all through. You actually see as the dual tower apartments, which are kind of right before your destination, is just, a f it's just, you can see there's a like refuge of raiders who are just up there on balconies, just just taking rifle shots everywhere. As you see, as some people lifting their hands up, never again. It's just as they're just leveled down to the ground. As you presumably take a different route to avoid this firing line that they've created in this tower apartments. So they move, but they never stop. It's as if the towers weren't even there. They keep striving, and all they can see in front of them is this Capitol building. Scan the, the lines of the buildings yes. for like another 50 cal emplacement or like something crazy. Like, no, come on, no, no. Mostly fool. just people with hunting rifles, many of them unscoped. Okay. You know? All right. And uh, so do you want to go past these apartments like everybody else, or do you want to just uh, move around, use the cover of the crowd? I think we should take the safe route. Yeah. 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 Take more time. That's fine. Right. Okay. But death takes long. <laughs> and it's it's the case, evening now, so it's... it's. No, at this point, you started this whole thing in the beginning. It is noon. Noon now, okay. Yeah. You've spent most of this morning inciting this riot, and as things are carrying on through the day, you can start to feel the heat in the midday sun. Patience is our friend. If the battle goes in our favor, we go there carefully, taking time. Who knows? That they may be weaker when we get there. You go around up a block and back around where things are decisively quieter, but you can still see a portion of people just, you know, small burst fire. You can hear the yells of a few persons. It looks like one of the members of the populace seem to just be assaulting someone on the ground as three people are just brutally just kicking and punching someone as they're laid out in the middle of the cross streets. And um, it's, it's insanity, right? You double back around through the second part and you come back basically circling around the block, around around the dual towers, and just completely out of nowhere, it would seem, you come across the corner and you can see the Capitol building. You can see the Sacred Dome, the large place, and you can start to see that a large uh, mass of people are starting to pull around it. It's very thin right now. It's just a few, few people deep, but it's all around it at this stage. And you can actually see, well, do you get closer at this point? Is it still pretty far away? I'm gonna stop it. When we were back in the treatment facility, we had a map that shows that there's a drainage pipe that takes us straight here. If we can find that drainage pipe, we can get under the Capitol. Yeah, are there, are there uh, sewer grates or anything anywhere? No, let me tell you how this applies. So, <laughs> there was a Lewis and Clark monument here a long time ago before the fall. How topical. How apropos. Yeah. Right? Is that statue still there, Chato? It was, but it is no longer. Has it just been taken down and replaced with something else? A crude image of chaos. Yes. All right. So as you come across these large sky-rise buildings, you kind of come across and you can see this government building, old government building that's been converted into Cayman's estate that is sitting literally on a hill overlooking the Missouri. And right before you come up the driveway that would lead you into the estate is this old, what was once the Lewis and Clark Monument, has been converted instead into a crude imitation of Cayman with his followers and the infected literally swirling around him as if he's commanding them around him. And you come across 
this part of the street and run up as you see people just standing on it, moving across it, just like ants, just moving up the hill as they just go up, up, up. You're mostly walking in yeah. what was once a bustling commercial enterprise, but is now just the upper echelon of Cayman's elite as this large commercial buildings have been converted into luxury lofts. As luxury as you can get this far out in the frontier. So it, it doesn't go directly under the building itself? Yeah, it doesn't. Not unless you go all the way around into the rails and then, and then into that hillside. So you would literally have to go all the way around this way into the rails and then punch in right through. So you would have to head towards the river and then along the rail lines and then literally march in through whatever sewer grade that you can find into the Capitol building. Because the Capitol building sits on a large, lifted up earthen ground. That building is built on top of it. So you've got 50 feet of just rock and concrete that this thing is just sitting on. Of course, it's gonna have drainage right underneath that. So the question is, do you want to walk up the driveway right into Cayman's estate? Or do you want to go around no. into the train, presumably based on your water and power drawings, go inside the rock? Are there any other like adjacent, comparably tall buildings? Yeah, uh, about the luxury lofts. Athlai is the luxury lofts, yeah. Do you want to put a sentry up on the top? I have to face him. I have to face him publicly. If he can hear me, if he can see me, I believe he will come out. If I fall, if he fights dishonorably, you do what you have to do. But I have to call him out. How can we support you? Where do you, where do you want us? You said, Chato, you're sure when you say there are no infected or what did you call them? The Chanu. The Chanu. There are no Chanu in the tunnels to your knowledge. But we're so close. This, this statue showing came on commanding the Chanu. The lie. It's pure fiction. This is no man's power to do such a thing. How you guys get... could control the wind or the water? It can't be done. For this city to be turned around, we've got to get him in a position to speak, to be heard, and to be seen. Uh, I, I do not agree. I, I think we should find the safest way to sneak in and confront him. He is scared now, he will be very heavily guarded. And I don't know if his arrogance and desire for dis display of strength will outweigh his own sense of self-preservation. It wouldn't for me. You are a warrior. He is not. I will follow what the vision. you decide. Great Spirit chose you. He did not choose me, he chose you. What does your heart say? My way got me exile. Your way got me here. Speak. It said you would be the one to defeat him. These tall buildings. Maybe we can go inside, get a higher vantage point, look down on him, maybe get some insight into what's going on in there. At least we would know. Because if I just go into the courtyard and yeah. start yelling, all right, so the largest building to where this sacred palace of his is, is about three to 400 feet away from the building itself. So it, the Lewis and Clark monument that is now the statue of Cayman sits in between both this tall infrastructure and the Capitol building itself. It could be a place in which if you could get his attention and he was looking through binoculars, could potentially see you. He certainly would not be far enough away for any crack shot to get a shot at you, at least. N not far enough? Like, they, I could be shot. You would be hard shot. You would be far enough right. away that it would be difficult for even a crack shot to get a hit on you from that far away, 500, 600 feet. I will go and call him out. He will answer or he will not. I will be victorious or I will not. Should he deceive me, should I fall, you take your tunnel, you go inside, you finish him your way. 
There's no reason why we can't both follow our own code. You call him out. If he descends, you confront him, try to kill him. While you are trying, I will circle around. I will follow my code. I'll cover you. So we're going to the building? I don't know. I think we're going to the monument. Or well, he's going I, to the monument. I'm going to the monument. He's swooping around. Uh, all right. To try to see if he comes out of his the Capitol building to, yeah. to confront him or whatever. All right, right. And I'm gonna co and I'm cover gonna him. stick nearby, try and cover him. There is there is some tree coverage across a four lane street. You can kind of see a overgrown pond that's been converted into like a well, it's been the one thing that's actually been kept up. There's no water in the fountain anymore, but there is treated grass. How close are, are the people, the mob? The mob has started coming up Capitol Hill, you could say. It started right. running up, and it started encircling at this point. And you can see as they're attempting every power they can in order to storm the gates as you are, but they are being met with as much automatic fire as you can expect from guards who are sitting at Capitol Hill trying to defend a coup. No matter what, you got me this far. I never thought I'd see this day. And I lean in and touch my forehead to hers like I did with him. All right. <laughs> Chato. Yes. As you walk with the people into the open square where this desecration, this blasphemy of a statue stands in front of you. I envision you climbing on top of it and standing on top with your hand on Kamon's outstretched arm, mimicking the old Lewis and Clark monument of the pre-fall as you're holding onto his arms and pointing your hand out into the Capitol building. What do you say? Kamon! Come forth, the people are here. If you would rule them, come and show them who their ruler is. Or do you hide behind your men and their guns? I will fight you as a man. And I put the crossbow back on my back. I don't drop it, but I just sling it. It's like, I will fight you as a man. I will fight you in the square. I will live up to our old ways. Will you face me or do you concede defeat? Diplomacy check. <laughs> I think that's an automatic success. <laughs> One degree of success. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. So, as you yell out this command, you inspire the people as they just raise their hands up. Cha to, cha to, cha to. And you can hear over a bullhorn a voice come out. And while a bullhorn is very good at rising the pitch of most people's voice, to a tinny, tight, almost pathetic kind of tone, you can still hear the growl that's still in this man's voice as he speaks his words out into the Capitol Square. <laughs> Chato, I see you've come back. You called me out into the square. Earth Mother has abandoned you. They have sent you out. Malsumus has told me everything I need to know about you. And your honor is too weak for me to match yours. It is not honorable combat when I am battling a worm. If the Earth Mother has forsaken me, if Malsumus has chosen you, then you have nothing to fear. Crush me! Show the people who their leader really is! Two degrees of success. <laughs> We're chanting. A cha. Cha to, cha to, cha to. You are a fool, cha to. You speak of things you don't understand. Malsumus has plans for me, it has plans for everyone here. There is ascension and time has come for me to become one with him. I will not let your petty differences and your desire for something as simple as a place upon the tower to stop plans that you have 
no comprehension of. I will come down to see you, but only to see you die. I start making my way back down, you know? <laughs> and I take, I take out my knife and my ax. All right. I have a hand-to-hand -hand fight here. I'm circling around and trying to find and like slip in the in through the crowd. Yeah. And get within a vantage point of where I can see where he's going to come down out of the doors mm -hmm. and try to follow him and count how many men he has and all this stuff like that. I would basically want to wait until he gets as close as he can to him. Yeah. Try to get around in a flanking position and keep an eye on any guards or anything well, he has. And do I do same. try and kind of yeah, no, back uh, yeah. more towards the center, like the middle of the street type thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, again, yeah. I know they've got guns. I'm not stupid. Right, 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 right. right. Was I in a tree? I forget. Tree line. Yeah, uh, so I am just like Covering him. focused, like looking for any kind of. Right. I'm in the tree as well. <laughs> by the tree line. We're by the tree tree buddies. I thought I was in a tree. Yeah, tree, tree buddies. <laughs> I turn to the crowd and I say, no man can speak for Mother Earth. No man can speak for Great Spirit. I have followed my own path and I stand here before you in faith. Whatever happens, never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. I just stand there ready for him. Like, right. <laughs> let's go. So you, uh, yeah. you just kind of watch as a group of ring slaves just kind of part as an entourage of just extremely well-armed, terrifying-looking men stride up with a man leading in front, long black hair, and as tall as Chatu is, 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, you see he has a long black trench coat, just thump, and more for dramatic effect, he's just letting it waft behind him as he has taken the sleeves and carved them off in order to put buckles lined up along every single line. And you can see on each buckle has been replaced the jawbone. And he has a tack vest and clearly some other kind of protective armor right underneath it as his belt shines with a forged blacksmith image of his symbol. His long pants with knee pads and high, thigh-high boots with glistening silver buckles as he walks forward. He holds a pickaxe that has had a flat hammer forged onto the side of it as if a war hammer of olden days. And he carries it as he strides forward into the town square. I gently put the crossbow down. Yeah. He throws down the hammer and you watch as it cracks the concrete as he lets it slide into the bottom as he scrapes in front of him and looks to you. I point at him and I say, you were my brother once. Not too late. Great Spirit smiles on all of us. There is still a way back for you. There was a time once, Chato, when you and I could be called brothers, but then I found a new father. Malsumis embraced me and told me of all of the things that can be and my potential in this world. And greatness is not built on the back of weak men. I am here today to show you, to show all of you that truth right here and you watch as he takes the item from his belt as he flicks it right towards you make a dodge check how many guys does he have with him <laughs> it's got to make a perfect triangle five i do not dodge at all three degrees of failure god damn all right <laughs> you feel is this dart kind of just stands right here and you look down at this dart and I'm gonna kill him with my new powers then. <laughs> What's like, the dart? What's the dart? Got the intelligence left. <laughs> Fuck this dude. Uh, yeah, I was gonna open fire unless but, you uh, want to. Let me try. Hey. Let me try. Okay. <laughs> charge, charge him. So what do charge I charge him? It's uh it's just your speed versus his speed at this point. Mm -hmm. You're charging him and taking a swing at him. 
Let's do three speed dice. Okay. I'm wielding oh. a heavy ass hammer. I'm oh. rolling four. I have two two weapons. I have six. I'll use them. Let's see. So speed, I'm at eight. Uh, so if I'm attacking, I'm 24. <laughs> uh, I don't go this round. I go next round. He's too flashy. Yeah. It's true. Swinging his hammer around. I'm going to spend uh, one of my other competence points mm -hmm. to get one degree of success on whatever this roll is going to be. Yes. What is this roll? I come at him with the hatchet. At the hatchet. Yeah. Right. So roll it. Yeah, because my my hatchet is long with the long red tassel. You yes. Know. Oh, yeah. Could my Chateau Mini make an appearance for the yes. what time yeah. he has left? <laughs> you know, yes. 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 Oh, cool. The Chateau Mini. Chateau Mini. Yes. There he is. All right. That is my come at me bro, Chateau. So how did you do on your roll? Zero degrees of success All for right. now. So as you wind up and charge him with your hatchet, you take a large swing as he just corrects his body as it just comes right by, and he slaps you with the back of his hand. 25. Oh, well, it's, it's actually, story-wise, it's perfect. Uh, take one damage against your damage threshold as he basically backhands you, uh, kind of sending you back five feet or so not even moving his hammer hand yet. As he looks to you. <laughs> You're getting old, Chateau. Can you see Wraith? And slow. He drops the hammer down. Roll speed and declare your intent again. What do you want on this one? Well, hold on. Yeah. You said he's got five guys arranged around him. Yeah. And are they looking around him at all? They're basically encircling both of them fighting? They're not encircling both of them fighting. They're actually just, at this point, I imagine that the people are in like a horseshoe and the group is at the top of that horseshoe. Okay. Both of them are in the center fighting. Okay, but where are his guards? The guards are at the top of the horseshoe. Basically what I'm trying to say is if I try to run at the back mm -hmm. of Kamon, yeah. guards would see me coming, right? Unless you were charging the back of the guards. Okay, so the, all the guards are facing the fight. All the guards are facing the fight. But they're between me and him. Yeah, because if I remember correctly, are you with these three? No, no the he's so they're, they're off on the tree, tree line just, to the side. Yeah, we're off together. And I'm with the, the crowd. I he's mingled down. into the crowd. Let me write get this behind out. Him. I apologize. I don't have a diorama for such an amazing occasion. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to view the top down on this, these are kind of like all of the people who are essentially watching the fight as both came on with his cloak and his hammer are sitting here with Chato, all right? And people are literally all around the side of them watching in a horseshoe, kind of like this. And his guards are making a bit of a wedge and came on was here. So they wouldn't see you if you came from this way. But no, I'm in the crowd. I basically assumed that I was about here. Yeah, so you could come around. No, I mean, but I, I could also get through the crowd and try to attack him from there, right? Yeah, you could, but this this is unfortunately, Kamon is the other side. Okay, the, other side. the tree line's on the other side of the people. And the tree line is just down here. Okay. So there are no people who've moved in behind these uh, no. These guards. So that's kind of going up the hill behind them. This right? is going up, yeah, basically this is the the road leading up to Capitol Hill. Is there room for people to go around behind the guards? Yes. Okay. All right, I got my intent then. Yes. Do what you will, my intent is to keep fighting. All right, Chato, your intent is to keep fighting. Right. Fighting. I'm going to I'm going to be at the at the edge of the the group of people, yeah. like relatively close to one of the tips of the horseshoe. Yeah. And I start whispering uh, to the people in the crowd and goes I am with Chato, but he cannot face this foe alone. He needs our help. Encircle behind the guards. Make it so that the crowd surrounds them both. Okay. Tell the others. Pass it on. Please do persuade for me. Okay. Uh, this is not, not my strength. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm a weird, creepy goth dude that people do not want to listen to. It's an unintentional but... intimidate. You, you, got, you got this. You like, do I have to do speed or any of that sort of no. stuff as part of my role? Okay. Uh, not good. That's, that's five degrees of failure. Oh, I don't listen to you at all. Yeah. Who's this crazy? Get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People are looking at you and... You're a liar. Uh, I got five degrees of failure as well, too. So theoretically, together, that makes zero, zero. degrees of success. Oh. Yay. Okay, so I didn't scare anybody. No, but they're all looking at you kind of like, no, shut up, this is a battle of honor. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Poor rage. Jenny and Ken's. I'm still. I'm just like waiting. Ready, just ready. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I say we're both. I'm, I'm on a hold. Yeah, we're. I'm. Chato, roll your damage. <laughs> As if they're trying to attack, right? Yes. Roll your attack. Oh. Okay. <gasps> Four degrees of success, which is enough to coup de gras, by the way. It just means you're it's dicing prone, the defense. Yes, yes, right, it does ignore it's good, defense. Ignore, right, right, yeah, exactly. All right. This ignores his defense. And it's, oh, one exploded, though. So 9, 10, 11, so 14 total. Uh, 19, 19. total. <laughs> 24 total. <laughs> okay, all right, 29 total. Uh, 31. 31? Oh, yeah. 30. Oh. <laughs> 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 and it does ignore his defense, but we don't know if he's able to know. What's your damage threshold? My damage threshold is nine, and not counting what you did to me, it's nine. No, nine, okay. Yeah. You said 33? 31? 31. What was the number? Yes, 31 points of damage. Three times the damage threshold? Explode, yeah. Okay. It, Exploded yeah. three times. It did explode three oh, times. No. Chato. Explain to me his grisly demise. No! Oh! I put a lot of thought into this. Yes. So, I would like to run towards him, <laughs> stab my knife down into his collarbone, hook his leg out with the oh, hatchet, drive the hatchet into him, yes. turn the knife over, and cut his throat as I rip the hatchet back out of him. He watches completely, completely caught by surprise. He was lifting his hammer around and swinging up to the top, and you close in enough time to do this move as you watch as he just throws his head back and drops to the ground, and in seconds it's done. And everyone is silent. You watch as the people look at the guards. I point at them with a bloody knife, and I say, drop your weapons. Your watches. Most of the guards kind of look at each other, they look at Chato, and they look down at Kamon. And they slowly start putting down their weapons. The one in the back bolts, he just runs as fast as he can. I'm out chasing after him. him. Yeah. Chase after him. Is okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go. Yes. Yeah. You can take a swipe at him, man. You can take him down, potentially. Okay. I have... Now, I would normally have two degrees of success, but I think I want to spend a competency point to get an extra one. Okay. So, Roll three. Um, so that's my base damage of two. Yes. And then i spending an extra two points where the damage was four. Four. All right. Ah. And that's, let's see, 9, 12, uh, 17 plus, it's 20 points of damage. Like a bat, you just swoop down and jump onto the top of his back and just take a clean cut along the side of him as he just is pinned and screams, ah! Alright, I submit, I submit! Get your bat off of me, Chacho! Get your damn bat off of me! I look at him for a sign. Oh. All right. So yeah, I spin my knife around and I just stab him in the face of the neck. He just is done. Pool of blood falls around him. As you look as all of the other guards put their stuff down, Chato, you went over Kamon's damage threshold by three times. 
That and with the coup de gras, with zero defense, that is auto death. You did that. You did this. That was did amazing. That. We're giddy in the tree, literally. Like, Great spirit did that. <laughs> and <laughs> upon, yeah! upon you see that shit. <laughs> with this downward motion and this this carnage laid before you, just everyone just cheers. <laughs> everyone lifts their hands up as this moment just erupts into a wildfire of just screams and just elation. Jefferson City has been completely redeemed thanks to Chato and our expeditionary team leading out west. A brave man. Is it Jefferson City or is it still Osage? It's Chato. <laughs> no, Chato's bird. Don't no, uh, don't what, 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 what did we call it when, when, we, when we first established it? Did we name it Jefferson City or did uh, Kamon name it oh, Osage? Did we change it? Kamon named it Osage. Hmm. I christen this place Jenny's bird. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching as we come to a close of our season. And I hope you enjoyed it. We certainly had fun. Thank you to all who came before, our deceased, our terribly wounded. We love you all. You've made this story part of what makes it amazing. Thank you again for all watching. They're alive. For now. <laughs>